let's keep on taking some of this stuff, but we're not going to... I'm not really a fan of... This super terse thing I was doing, um, I, I still do like to not um, go off the edge of my screen, but uh, when I wrote this code initially, I had like a 50 column limit, and now I've kind of loosened up to a 64 column limit which is still, you know, a very restricted space, but it's because I use a vertical monitor. And I think code code's natural layout is vertical, and the natural layout for code is actually a vertical monitor. Um, that's an opinion. Um, so I think this might be a little bit too terse, uh, right? Because to make the code terse, I have to add an extra layer of mental indirection, right? So I have to do this weird stuff here, and then we have to jump mentally from here to here and then to the function call when we could just have this and the function call on like one line. Um, but we know we know we probably need this. We actually probably need this. Um, the thing that gets me is, you know, let's just take all of that and we can put it here. Uh, and that's before pushing active texture bind texture I feel like I used active texture somewhere already or maybe I didn't uh, I probably used a different active command right for like the buffers so I go GL active and I look for that now huh okay well what the hell did I use up here then uh, enable vertex attribute pointer get attrib location bind buffer and buffer data. Okay, so I didn't, I don't know, it just seems more familiar than it should. It just feels like I already used it in the code, and I don't know why. Um, whatever. Okay, so we have a decent sizable chunk of code, and um, the texture slot, um, we're gonna need some type of constant. Um, so I'm gonna do like um, texture. Um, do we really wanna do that? Uh, hmm. Bar, uh, or actually, you know what it is? Um, we had a global, global data. We had a global data object in the last thing. And let's just put a uh, global data dot, um, uh, uh, texture slots, global data dot texture slots, and then um, we'll store uh, we'll store main memory uh, in. Um, do I want to keep it as a Want to keep it like that, or do we want to keep it a uh, lowercase? Well, this is terminal. This is a terminal node, so I'll make it lowercase. And then we'll do uh, the ISO mem. Yeah, so they need to occupy different uh, texture slots. And, you know, previously I was using a global data object. Uh, and so we'll have to fuse this global data object with the global, global data object of the previous code, when we're like <clears throat> um, kind of like mashing these projects together. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, and then we can make a little comment here. Uh, texture slot constants. <clears throat> you know, and you can make a note here that this is global data. I don't really require, this is more to help other people. 
because um, you know I don't really need to know that's global data. I can read that myself because um, I'm used to my terse code. Um, um, texture, and you can say texture slot main memory, and then we could say uh, texture slot and um, isolated memory. Uh, so ISO mem we're going to use as kind of like a scratch pad to get ourselves started uh, and get things working, and then eventually we'll, we eventually uh, in the far future we want to use main memory instead of ISO mem, right? Because we want to pack multiple tile maps into one like main memory object. Um, so usually the to me the more important things get the lower numbers um, because you once you're at zero you with you know unsigned values or or slots you can't go you can't go any further down and but you can always add numbers so I just feel like when you're assigning priorities or at least the way I interpret it is when you assign priorities the lowest number is always the highest priority because you could never um, obviously that sounds kind of weird but uh, the lowest number is the most important priority and then the highest number is the least important priority in in terms of like how I'm how I write code and how I interpret things like that um, okay so we have that and then we can just take the global data oh you know what um, do we want to so eventually we want to put this in like a constructor uh, you know, but we can just keep it here for now, right? We're going to just get it working, uh, and we can worry about cleaning it up after it's working. Okay, so global data dot texture slots dot, um, uh, what do we want to do first? Well, uh, we want to do the scratch pad first, right? We just want to get that working, the 512 by 512. Okay, so... Active texture, uh, then we're going to do bind texture, and uh, text is, okay, so we have, uh, do we have a create texture call somewhere? Uh, that we obviously need to. Uh, so here's a thing called text. It looks like text might be made somewhere else. Um, not sure what, uh, gl. Oh, I have a light, nice little note here. gl.create texture. That's what text is. Um, so why is. Okay, well, I mean, if that's what it says, and I probably can look around here and go Control F, texture. Um, oh, got you. And then I did the unpack one. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. So gl dot create texture. I just need to do that, uh, and I believe that that's just going to. Um, I believe gl create texture is just kind of like reserving a variable. Um, it's not really reserving any memory, but it's like reserving a, a variable in OpenGL to be used for a texture. Um, okay, and then I have the reference here. Okay, here's create texture, bind texture, texture 2D, and then text image. Okay. Um, so we know we need to create a texture, but that has to be assigned to a variable. So I believe um, that texture is pro the the value returned from um, creating a texture is probably like a texture handle. Yeah, because I call it text hand right there, texture handle. Um, now the difference between a texture handle and a texture slot, um, I always kind of like mix those up a bit because um, I'm like. Why do you need a texture handle if you have a texture slot? You know, like, why why is that necessary? Um, like if it's the texture that's at you know this location, why does it need a handle? 
Um, I don't know. We could look up the documentation and kind of see if uh, we can get some answers. Um, so uh, create texture. So we're going to look that up and uh, WebGL. Why is my default browser not whatever? OK. Create texture. Um, creates and initializes a WebGL texture object. A WebGL texture object to which images can be bound to. So I'm going to take a guess that um, uh, we might actually get more insight as to what's really what GL create texture is. It's if we actually look at like the C code, um, not not the actual C code, but like the C documentation, um, because I think um, I think WebGL might have like like almost like one extra layer of of abstraction, which makes it harder to understand what's actually going on. Um, so let's see, GL create textures, uh, create texture objects, GL enum target, uh, it's void, so it doesn't return anything, uh, which means that this last uh, value here would be the output, and it's a GL uint, and it's a pointer, right? Because usually when you have output parameters in C, you're going to use uh, a pointer because well you can't really make it an output parameter if you don't have a pointer right um, uh, let's see GL you know target size textures okay so if we look at textures uh, specifies an array in which names of the new texture object are stored okay names of the new texture objects are stored and names we know basically means a number okay because that's in OpenGL lingo, names means a number. And uh, so names in which texture objects are stored basically means um, that definitely tells me that um, that definitely gives me enough information to go off to be pretty damn sure that GL create texture returns a texture handle. Um, and uh, Handles don't necessarily need to be uh, numbers, um, but but they usually are. So usually when I'm saying a handle, I mean a number that represents an object. Um, so a way a handle works is like you could have like an array, and the array could have like different objects at different indices, and then instead of passing around the object, you pass around, uh, say, if you want uh, the first object, you just pass around zero, because right, it means the zeroth object in that array, and that's like a handle, right? Uh, you want the you want the uh, the um, fifth object, right? You pass around um, uh, five minus one, right? Because starting counting at zero, um, so you pass around a four, and that four, that actual four, represents an object, right? Um, and then only when you're just ready to use the object, you kind of like, uh, um, what do you call it? Only when you're ready to use the object do you kind of like redeem the object and you know put that object back into the put that number back into the array to get out the actual object. Um, it's also a way to uh, encapsulate data. Um, so in C, in C, there is no such thing as uh, private variables. So one way to make private variables or like private objects or like to encap hide data is you give somebody a handle. So you don't give them the actual object so they can't do anything with it. You just give them a number, right? And they have to pass that number around and if they want to do something with that number they have to give that number to you and then you'll go find the data that's linked to that number. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, GL uh, create textures. Do I have to read any more about this? I don't. I don't think I do. I mean, I already read about it enough to understand that 
this create texture is going to get me a texture handle. Um, now, if we're going to have texture slots and texture handles, do we want to like, how do we want to organize this? Um, do we want another subcategory? Um, uh, we might want to keep stuff simple. Um, so like, like this nesting is going to get out of hand, right? Because, okay, we're going to do this. Oh, look, but it has a texture handle, right? So then you're going to do like this, and then have like this, and then you're going to have the same stuff here, but these are like, um, they're not set yet. Um, you know, maybe you uh, set them to negative values, which are usually invalid handles, you know. And now we kind of have this data um, that's a little bit nested, a little bit too deep for my liking. You know, it's nice that it's categorized like this, right? Because you can go text texture slot dot main memory or texture handles dot main memory. Um, but um, and I really do like the ability to you know double click this and you know see those connections. Um, but it's also imposing you know extra structure that probably isn't needed and not only is it extra structure but it also kind of fractionates stuff right because this is fractionated over here and now you have to like we have to make some arbitrary choices uh, right because see this text hand on text slot you know we could do it a different way we could have like a, a, a main memory object right and then inside main memory we could have um, the texture handle and then we could have the uh, texture slot and then we could have the uh, texture slot right um, so it's like how do you want to group that right because then you could have that and then right you'd have another one for in the, in here you could have another one for the uh, um, isolated memory object right and it has a texture handle and a texture slot. Um, now I guess if you want to think of it in terms of like object orient orientation, right, and, and code reuse, this would probably be the correct way, right? Because these objects have um, identical internal structure, right? And if we do it, um, well then again, these do as well, right? Um, yeah, technically these have the same internal structure as well, but um, these are texture handles and these are texture slots. So technically, technically, if we were like to be strict doing strict typing, this would be different internal data than this. This would be di different data than this, right? In terms of the typing of that data, which means that this object would have to be an instance of a different type than this object. Right, so if we're doing a completely object-oriented way, the choice between doing it either this way or this way, it, it, we would definitely do it this way. This is how we would group it. Um, now, I think I want to do, I think maybe neither of these choices is the right way to go, because both of them involve extra nesting, right? And then if you're going to be completely OOP about it, now you need some type of object. You got to figure out what the name for this object is, and then you have to create a constructor for it. Um, that's a lot of a lot of complexity that I don't think I want. So what I could do is um, I do think. Um, So I do like I do like this like but looking at both of these I kind of like this one a little bit better than I like this one. So we'll take this version and we're gonna we're gonna denest it. So we're gonna say like um, the main memory and then um, uh, like that. Um, and now that's a little bit 
hard to read, I think, visually for me. Um, we could keep the same pattern of, um, right, main memory is a constant, right, because it's a non-terminal node. Um, so we could do the same thing where we do like this, like uh, main memory, right? And so this would read main memory dot texture handle. Um, and then we do the same thing, uh, texture slot. And now we have a nice like general, we got general to specific kind of pattern going here. And then um, now obviously general to specific changes is kind of subjective and context dependent, right? Because um, if you sorted the data in a different way, right? What is general, what is specific, right? Because uh, maybe this is the specific part, if it's the main memory or the uh, isolated memory, right? But you kind of have to choose which one you want to go with. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna uh, stick with stick with this. Um, it's it's kind of long, which I don't like. It's kind of it's kind of ugly, ugly as sin, right? That's why it's you know this having dots like that, right? Where you can do this. This is nice, right? This is oh, that's so nice. But um, making my code more complicated because of that kind of superficial preference, I don't know if it's worth it. I mean, I do like that, you know, when I click this, these other things light up and it helps me see connections. Um, but I think maybe I shouldn't be quite a uh, slave to my tools like that. And because I think this is a more sensible approach, right? It's much simpler, doesn't involve any extra nesting that's unnecessary. Um, Right, figuring out how much categorization and how much nesting that is that is an art form what's going on right here right now um, I can still kind of see connections if I want to it's just not as immediate as like double clicking for instance if I want to do texture handle I can like highlight that and I can do uh, control one to activate some token highlighting and temporarily highlight the similar things and I can do the same thing uh, with this, right? So if I want to see connections between things, I can still do it. I just have to um, use some of my shortcuts in Notepad++. Um, so I think the best choice is to err towards this kind of simplicity and just get better at uh, using your tools. You know, rather than trying to like make the code more complicated, just so that it's easier to work with in your editor. Um, but uh, yeah, try not to. Yeah, try not to change the functionality of your code, uh, just because, just for like superficial reasons. Um, you know, uh, speaking of that, uh, changing code for superficial reasons, uh, this bullshit I was doing, right? Um, I gotta call bind, I gotta create this variable, and then like I'm invoking the function on a, on a bound variable. I'm literally changing the behavior of the function um, just to get a, a visual style, which is horrible, horrible thing to do. Um, now, okay, the, the end result is the same, right? Like, because, uh, what I'm doing is, like, these calls here are effectively the same thing as, uh, calling this directly, uh, with these parameters, but I'm still changing, um, the execution pattern of, of the code, right? It's going to get identical results, but I'm still changing the execution pattern of the code, right? So I'm adding extra complexity to how the code executes just so that I can get some type of visual style. That's that's a no-no. Um, that's why I like C, though, because C, will you can use some macros, and then you can change things visually uh, if you really want to without changing how the code is executing. 
Um, but yeah, introducing extra complexity like this uh, just to satisfy your desire to have code formatted in a certain way, uh, no. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, don't do that. Don't do not do what I did here. This, this is bullshit. Uh, okay, I need to stop recording because I think this is almost 30 minutes.